Hey guys, welcome back to Outperform. This is Coach Jules, and I want to help you out, try to figure what to do when you go to the gym. And what I mean by that is, I want you to understand the difference between the relationship of sets and reps. And what, I, what I'm trying to relate to you is that there is an inverse relationship between sets and reps. So if you look at the chart right here on my pretty little dumbbell, for one rep, moves all the way to 10 reps, okay? And if you look here in the sets category, one set moves all the way to 10 sets. So to help you out when you get to the gym, you need to understand how many sets to do for how many reps you're going to perform. So if say your goal was to be strong, okay? Well, you know that working between one and five reps is going to help more of a neurological adaptation okay that's going to help you get stronger so you can't do a little sets okay because you're only doing one rep all right so as you can see it's opposite there's a bigger number for the sets so if you were to do lower reps you need more sets to equal a certain amount of reps now, what is that magical amount of rep number? There is a, a certain chart that a lot of strength coaches go by. It's not set in stone, but a lot of people like to use it. But we're not gonna talk about today, okay? Today, I just want you to understand that there's a difference between the love and hate relationship between sets and reps, okay? I want you to understand that as for exercises, when you're going to do low reps, you need more sets to get an adaptation or to get to a stimulus inside of your system. If you're doing a lot of reps, okay, the magical three sets of 10, all right? Well, look, it's lower sets. That's why you see three sets of 10. You don't see high numbers with high sets, okay? It, it will accumulate too much fatigue in your body, okay? Now, also between five reps and 10 reps gives you more of a structure uh, or structural adaptation, all right? A lot of people use one to five to be strong, and a lot of people use five to 10 to get bigger, okay? So if I was to get bigger, I'm also probably worrying about the way I look. So I would do multiple exercises to say work my chest. You know, I, I may have an exercise for my upper chest, and I might have an exercise for my, my mid chest, okay? And so if I'm doing sets of say 10 reps or eight reps, I may be doing lower amount of sets because I'm doing higher reps. I may do three sets of 10 on incline press, and I may do three sets of 10 on flat dumbbell press. Now, I'm still getting a lot of work done on my chest because that's an equivalent of 60 reps, but I've used six sets to achieve that. Now, if I come over to the strength side, now at this point i'm not really worried about looks not that i'm not ever worried about looks but you can't always train for hypertrophy and you can't always train for strength you have to mix it up so even though that you may be training to look good or get big at some point you need to switch over and you need to work on getting stronger if this is the option and you work in at singles then you would see people do 10 sets of one because there's only one repetition I mean, even after doing 10 sets of one, that still only leaves you with 10, 10 total repetitions, okay? Now, we wouldn't try to accumulate too many repetitions because of the neurological damage that our body will receive. We don't need 60 reps like we did on this side, but you are gonna need a sufficient amount of sets to stimulate the body. So, it's a simple process. Uh, I just wanted you to get a basic understanding. It could get a lot more complex. It's a lot more specific for beginners, and it's a lot more specific for be uh, intermediates. And then it gets a lot different also for advanced trainees. Advanced trainees actually can start to do less sets per body part because they're so neurologically efficient in working those muscles that they don't need so much stimuli. And then at the same time, sometimes those advanced lifters or intermediate lifters get what they call stagnant. They can't seem to make that muscle grow anymore. They can't seem to get stronger. Then you get into some shock values right there. You know, 
naturally this would follow like long rest periods, but I know some people that do 10 sets of one with short rest periods. They're still getting stronger, but at the same time, they're not fully recovering. So it's just different types of training protocols. There's all kinds of different ways to work out and it can get very confusing and I understand that. I remember myself what it was like looking through magazines and trying to figure out what's going on here. I mean, how are they even designing these programs? It just, the stuff just didn't make sense. It just seemed like they were just taking every exercise they could find and everybody was doing three sets of 10, three sets of 10. So it wasn't until I became a strength coach and started getting certified and going on and reading more research and more research and from other authors and read a lot of information from the Eastern Bloc countries. I started to really learn and study the programming and the science behind it. And that's actually where I fell in love with weight training itself. It's not that I just enjoy doing it for myself and I worked out because I either wanted to be strong or I wanted to look good or get bigger but I truly enjoyed the science behind it, designing the programs, deconstructing the programs, how did they work, why did they work, the different ways of getting the same result by using different methods. But it's a basic, simple process that pretty much everyone follows and you can get away with it for the rest of your life without even manipulating it very much. It's just understand the love-hate relationship that is an inverse relationship between sets and reps. The lower the amount of reps you do, the more amount of sets you need to stimulate your body. The more amount of reps you do, the lower amount of sets you're gonna need. I hope this helps you out. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, and share this video with anyone you think it would help.